you know what I'm telling my son about you. Know what I'm saying? Ain't none of this in vain. Ain't none of this in vain with the kids, y'all. Lower, lower. Ain't none of this in vain. Lower, lower, lower. Go ahead prepare them. Go ahead prepare them. That's it, y'all. Go ahead prepare them. Keep the kids coming to church. Lower. Keep your kids coming to church, y'all. They need it. You need it. We need it. The next generation need it, y'all. I don't know if y'all see what be going on, but it's crazy. Out there. It is crazy out there. Low it, low it. The devil is on full display. Low it, low it. And at first, you know what I'm saying? He was ducking and hiding, but man, they done, they done came with a with an alley way where he want to show his face like he that bold, but the devil is alive. Lord, Lord. The devil is alive. Yeah. That's better lie. I'm talking about it. Everything, it ain't just the, at first, you know, everybody was tripping about this LG. It's bigger than that now. It's bigger than that. You know what I'm saying? They made it to a way where, you know what I'm saying? Oh, everybody got a freedom to write but do what they want to do. Now, that's how it is now. So if you want to worship the enemy, they got it with, oh, you can do that how you want to do it. The devil is alive. The devil is alive. The devil is alive. They tricking these kids, grown-ups, and everything. Y'all don't even understand it's real out here in the field with them. The devil is real, y'all. You can't even play on the game no more, y'all. Every now and again, I get on Call of Duty. Y'all don't even understand. I don't really play too many other games. I get on Call of Duty just for to get on there with my cousins or something. Just for, you know, but then, then time we might be joking on there or whatever. I'm there all of a sudden. They got on this mug, I'm like, man, it's, 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 this one seems to That was the first thing that came to my mind, I get on there. It's, I'm like, man, why does it seem so demonic? And in the middle of the game, we just talking and joking, and in the middle of the game, they got a red beam coming down on the board. I'm like, man, that's just, man, some way right, but I ain't paying attention, because we claim, you know, you can talk on them. So I'm on there talking, my cousin, we just laughing and joking, and then my little brother say, bro, did you just see that? I say, what? They say, man. In the red light, it say, come join the satanic ritual. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, you Man, let me tell y'all something. Y'all don't even understand how many children own the game. How many adults own the game? Don't they ever know what's going on? You see all these people. I get, in other words, it's saying, come join Satan in this ritual that we have. Come come into agreement with what the devil is doing over here. Y'all don't even understand. Man, y'all better be involved in every part of your kid's life. Everything that's going on in your kid's life, you need to be a part of it. Every movie, every video, every cartoon, every song. I don't care what it is. Glow it, glow it. For real, the devil ain't playing for Glow it, glow it. And I'm not playing with you. For real, though, he's trying to pull your card. Lord. Well, we ain't no wimps. Lord. We is not no wimps. We no bad God. Glory be to God that we know the truth and we talk the truth, y'all. Pray over your kids. Keep your kids involved in church so they can be able to recognize and realize when something ain't right. This ain't what I've been taught. This ain't what my mom and daddy taught me. They told me this was wrong. See, if you teach them right, then they always gonna come back to what they've been taught. They always gonna come back to what they've been taught. They may go out there, but they gonna come back. They, after they go out there, they see that man, what I thought was what's up ain't what's up. They coming back because literally ain't nothing out there. No, no. There's nothing out there, y'all. I don't care about how much money you got. I'm always gonna say that. But it don't matter how much money you got. God say wherever I called you at, that's where I called you to be. Oh, I don't care if I called you to be a slave in that spot, that's where I called you to be. Yeah. Honor me. Yeah. Right. Glorify me right there. Yeah. Be that light in the darkness. Lord. Be Lord. that light in the Lord. darkness. Lord. God say, why would I light a candle and put up and, and cover it up? God uh, say no, you take it and you put it on the light stand so everybody can get some light. Stop running from the power that God invested in you. Lord, Lord. You have power that's invested in you. You have the power of God in you. The Bible say according to the power that's working in us. You have power that's in you. You need to work. You don't have to be scared, ripping and running from these devils out you. Use what you got. Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, God, for these kids. Lord. Ain't none of it in vain, y'all. Father God, we just thank you this morning, Father God.
before. We just lift you up, Father God. Father God, you are Lord and you are King over all. And we appreciate you for all things, Lord. Father God, we ask that you have your way this morning. Please, Lord, do what you want to do, how you want to do it. Say what you want to say, Father God. Use us how you want to use us, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, have free course in this building. Walk every pew, every seat, every aisle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ from this church to every church across the world. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for all Christians. We pray, Father God, for all Christians right now, Father God. We thank you for loosening the burdens of all Christians, Father God. We thank you for the protection and the covering of all, all of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We lift up, Father God, Pastor Joseph and Bridget Stein in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God. Father God, we ask, Father God, you just keep a hand of protection over them, Father God. Everywhere they go, everywhere they step, Father God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Father God, you put together no man for the Son of the Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for unity. We bind any kind of division, Father God, out of this ministry, out of the back. We bind division, period, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bind confusion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God. Father God, we just want to say we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Man, it's crazy. Y'all don't even understand, man. You can't even watch shows. You can't even watch shows these days. Everything you watch is in violation of what you against your belief. I'm so serious. All the music, it's like, man, what's going on? And then I'm going to tell y'all, you know what I'm saying? Yes, we serve God. We worship God. But, man, we got to stop taking the word of things that they use for the worship sake for the worship God. Come on, honey. you know what I'm saying? Oh, we gonna stop. We gonna use this. We to serve the devil. Now we gonna serve God. We're not going on. Yeah, come on, yeah. God said, I got what's for me. It's for me. Oh, yeah. what's yeah. for the word for the world? That's right. That's stop right. Stop trying to compare the two with like they together. No, they ain't. Then one is holy, one is unholy. It's a difference. We are the difference. Hallelujah. God say, I set y'all apart. You know what set apart me that me? I'm not dealing with that. I done got a land right here. I can't cross that line. We separated. Do y'all know what that means? We've been, we, man, we've been teaching for the God over these early moves. We've been teaching, even, even when it comes to our church, when it comes down to things like virginity. You know, I don't even hear nobody teaching their kids to be virgins. No more. Everything is done around us. Men get with women, men get with women, or whatever else they be trying to do out there. Amen. Don't even know, you know what I'm saying? A lot of them are messing up their lives, yeah. spiritually, yeah. mentally, yeah. physically. Yeah. For real, though, you, man, you go in everything like porn these days. Yeah. Every show you watch, you think it's porn. I go, man, I'm telling you, y'all think I'm playing. You can't watch nothing. Everything out there like porn, and y'all don't know porn is bad for you. Lord, Lord, said, brother. Porn is bad for you. I don't know if you know it or not. You in porn and all porn do is make you want to lust after the flesh. Lord, That's all it do. Lord, Lord. It has nothing to do with God. Lord. It has nothing to do with God. Lord. I don't care if you mad. It has nothing to do with God. Lord. You watch porn. All it makes you do is size up the dick six. Size up, size up whatever you going out. Lord. That's all it do. For real, I don't care if you're a woman, you're going to be sizing up the mother, men, or other women. I don't care if you're a man, that's all they're going to do, make you want to go after that flesh. When God tell you stay away from it. God tell you stay away from fornication. God tell you to stay away from these sexual immoralities. But we not taught that. We tell them use the club. No, man, stay a virgin. Don't do nothing. Don't mess with none of that. But a lot of us got to learn the hard way. Amen. But thanks be to God from grace and mercy and turning away from our sin from, with repentance. Yeah. Hallelujah. We able for the fall back and right grace with God. Yeah. We able to fall back and right standing with God. Amen. Thank God for grace and mercy. Thank God for grace and mercy. We come into a time, y'all, where you got to totally depend and trust on God. We come into a time where you got to totally depend and trust on God. I'm telling you, it's going to be bad as you cannot fight. 
it's going to be better than somebody going to be one through praying and fasting. That's right. That's right. I'm telling y'all, it's going to be prayer that's going to be worn through praying and fasting. Y'all better get on board. I'm telling y'all, it's getting real in the field around here. It's Come getting on. real, real. Come on. Right. Yes, we don't know what's going to be going on in the next 20 years. That's right. That's right. But the only thing I can say if God is with you, we good. Okay. That's why you need to make sure your kids in church. If your kids not in church right now, what they gonna be doing in 20 years? You think all of a sudden they gonna oh, let me go to church? Come on, man. What y'all think they gonna do? Whatever you they doing now, it's gonna escalate. If you dressing your little girl in short skirts right now, when she get on the wall, all of a sudden she start wearing long pants. I mean, that's how you raising the train to this young lady. I'm just keeping it a buck with y'all. Today we're going to be talking about marriage. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking about marriage. We're going to be talking about how God wants you to marry the right person. That's right. That's right. Say it, Pastor. Say it, Pastor. How God wants you to marry the right person. Say it, Pastor. You can't just marry anybody. Say it, Pastor. Just anybody is not for you. Say it, Pastor. You marry the wrong person, you'll be getting a divorce next week. Yeah. And you'll be saying, well, what God put together, God ain't put that together. Say it, Pastor. That's why you get a divorce, the God ain't put it together. Yeah. And then they got better have that foolish that do get a divorce, but they don't know. The Bible says you still marry some of y'all. According to the Bible, some of y'all, that's why some of y'all can't go on to the next because you're still married to that person. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's it. That's right. Amen. Wow. You're the Lord. We're going to start off with Exodus. The children of Israel, one of their main failures was them marrying the wrong people. Time after time after time again, I'm going to show you. They was married to wrong people. Uh -huh. And that killed them, the anger of God. It upset him so much that God said, I'm a jealous God. Uh -huh. yes, what you mean you jealous? Just like you jealous. If you married it, even, even if your spouse flirt with that's something right. else you made. Right. God said, even if you flirt with the enemy, I'm mad. That's right. That's right. I'm a jealous dog. I don't want you messing with none of that that's unholy because it ain't no good for you. Amen. Amen. Speak that. Exodus 34, where we'll start. Exodus 34, start off with Moses cutting out two stones for God to write the Ten Commandments of he was up there talking to God on the mountain. God had called him up on the mountain. He had broke the previous set of uh, commandments because they had made a man. He came back. God said, I'm going to give it to you again. Faithful. So now he on the mountain talking to Abraham. He said, listen, I am making a covenant with you in the presence of all your people. I will perform miracles that have never been performed. God say, I'm going to perform miracles that have never been performed anywhere in all the earth or any nations. I'm going to do something that nobody never seen before. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's my I'm going to do something that ain't never been that's seen before. That's yeah. And all the people around you will see the power of the Lord. All the people going to know you belong to God then. Amen. All the people going to know who God is. Amen. His power. The awesome power I will display for you, but listen carefully to everything I command you to think. Then I will go ahead of you and drive out the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, and the Jupiters. So I will drive out all these nations who are bigger than you and stronger than you. Amen. He said, very, he said, be very careful never to make a treaty with them when you live in that land. He says, if you do, you will follow their evil ways and be trapped. He said, instead you must break down their pagan, out, their, their pagan altars, smash their sacred pillars, and cut down their Asherah poles. You must worship no other God, for the Lord, who is very jealous, Amen. 
is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. Hey, no, no, no. You must not make a treaty of any kind with the people living in the land. They lust after their gods, offer sacrifices to them. They will invite you to join them in their sacrificial meals, and you will go with them. Then you accept their daughter. See, they just gonna string you along piece by piece. Uh -huh. They gonna string you along piece by piece. It's like then you accept their daughters who sacrifice to other gods. You see what she doing, but you still want to wipe her. You see how she living, but you still want to wipe her. She has no interest in your God. No, no. She has no interest in your beliefs. No. Hallelujah. No, no. It says, in then they will seduce your sons to commit adultery against me by worshiping other gods. Come on here. Come on here. So man Rome can seduce you from God, can pull you away from God. We're going to finish up. Go to all. Deuteronomy 7. We're we, we going to be talking about the same thing. It's the same thing. Just a different old book. <laughs> same thing we talking about. Still with Moses. It's like when the Lord your God bring you into the land you're about to enter and occupy. Mm -hmm. He's saying the same thing now. He will clear away many nations up ahead of you. The Hedeites, the Gergeshites. The Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hebrews, the Jubazites. These seven nations are more greater in numbers than you. Man, don't be worried about nothing that's in front of you. Blow it, blow it, blow it. I don't care how big it is. Blow it, blow it. God say, don't worry about it. I got you. When the Lord your God hands these nations over to you and you conquer them, you must completely destroy them, make no treaties with them, and show them no mercy. You must not intermarry with them. Do not let your daughters and sons marry me to worship other gods. Ah, that's right. yeah. Hold up, you ain't done. Yeah. Watch this. Then the anger of the Lord will burn against you. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So I'm in right standing with God. My life going good. And by me getting with the wrong person to mess up my whole life. No, no, sad me. Sad me. By you getting with the wrong person will mess up your whole life, not just your life, what about your kids' life? I'm just saying, though. And then when your life messed up, the people who love you, they like get into, they get in a twine with you too because they love you, so now they're part of it too. So this affects a bunch of people. What about the kids? How do it affect the kids? Huh? How about the, the, the son act like the father? The daughter act like the mother? How do it affect the kids? If the dad ain't right, how you think the son going to be, be teaching the son his ways? That's right, that's right. If he teaching his son to be disrespect, if he's teaching his son to be rude, if he teaching his son to be careless, just go ahead and do anything. Man, right. I'm just saying. That's right. You got to marry the right one. That's right, that's right. You got to marry the right one. God said you need to make sure you stay inside the people, inside the believers room when you marry. Yeah. Make sure you marry a believer. Make right. sure you are married a believer. Right. It's so powerful who you marry, you could be a king. We got a king by the name of Solomon. Was great. One, matter of fact, the wisest king that ever lived. If you go to Proverbs, the first verb of Proverbs, Proverbs is a book of wisdom. God gave this man all this wisdom. Yeah. This the man that built the big tabernacle for God for the worshiping. It says, Proverbs chapter 1 and 1. These are the Proverbs of Solomon. If y'all ever read this book, they got so much wisdom and knowledge for you to live off of that this is crazy. This man wrote the whole book of Proverbs. Yes. Let's read about what Mary and the wrong women did to him, who was a man of God. Yes. Matter of fact, this was David's son, King David's son. King David said, make sure 
You obey every command. He gave him the command. Make sure you obey the Lord and all his command. And if it weren't for David, God would have took the whole kingdom away. Yes. But because his daddy was David, and God liked and loved David so much, God said, I ain't going to take the whole kingdom away from him. Go with me, the first kings. First Kings, chapter 11, verse 1. Now, King Solomon loved many foreign women. Come on here. Sound like your normal man. For real, women, y'all might not understand. I'm trying to get my wife to understand. That's how me and this, dude, we are raised different. For real, though, women try to make sure they get with the right one, and men think all of them the right one. I'm so serious. I was talking to a lady later, I'm like, I wonder why that he don't leave her alone if he don't like, if he want to mess with somebody else. And I was like, yeah, that's the right thing to do. But let me tell you how most men think. If you got a box and you got a hundred dollars in there, why would he want to lose any of them dollars? He want all of them. Men and women think different. This right here, the only thing that'll straighten a man out right here. This right here. If you don't have this, you don't know no better. And if you don't know no better, how you gonna do better? So don't go get a man that ain't in the world thinking he gonna be faithful to you. You foolish for thinking that. That's right. That's right. He ain't nowhere in the world. He don't come to church. He don't read the Bible, but you mad because he's not faithful. That's right. Well, man, you need to be mad at yourself for the choices you make. Right. Sometimes you need to take responsibility for your own act. Because nine times out of ten, the, 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 the evidence was in front of you the whole time. Amen. Come on now. Amen. He says. Besides Pharaoh's daughter, he married Pharaoh's daughter, mm. which was a Moab. They say he married a, a, a Edom, a Sidon, and from the tribe of the Hittites. Amen. The Lord had clearly instructed the people, you must not marry them because they will turn your hearts to their gods. God said you must not marry them. That was an order. You must not marry them because they were what? Turn your heart. They not, they not worshiping me. They don't love me. She don't care about me like that. Amen. Huh? He don't love me. He don't care about me like that. He want to have priests and stuff. She want to have priests. They want to do this and that. They ain't trying to live by my word. Say it, Pete. Say it, Pete. It says you must not marry them. Yet Solomon insisted on loving them anyway. He had 700 wives. Y'all complaining? It's, it's the, yeah, King Solomon, 700 wives and 300 concubines. I'm just saying. Y'all won't be up here, but that man has 700 wives. And 300, he had 300 side pieces. That's, that's, that's a lot of emotions. I'm just saying. We're emotional people. Right. Emotional people. Oh. Yeah. 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 It says yeah. in verse 4, in Solomon's old age, they turned his heart to worship other gods yeah. instead of being completely faithful Ooh, to the Lord his God Lord. and his father. And as his father David had me. Come on here, y'all. Come on here, y'all. A man with great wisdom. Great wisdom. A man who did great works for the kingdom of God. How does some of y'all think y'all so high up? That's right, that's right. But you gotta be careful. That's right, that's right. You got to be careful. Make sure you still doing the right thing. Some of y'all think y'all just, well, God don't forgive it. Yeah, oh, God don't let this slide, man. It's only going to happen so much. Praise God, right? It's only going to happen so much. And we know when we're doing something, we need to straighten up. Yeah. Huh? Amen. All King Solomon had to do was what actually Amen. happened. Amen. See, when it comes to repent and turn your heart, when you got a problem with something, but give it to God. Amen. Lord, please, I'm begging you, Lord, please help 
Can't we get a kid? Can't this get away from me? Come on, please. Yeah. See, I'm in a big and move me. I, I would beg for it to get right. Yeah. Please, yeah. Lord. Say it, me say it, I me. am so sorry, Lord. Please. Help me. 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 I know if I go to him and I would pick up, turn my back toward that crazy stuff, Jesus. and it's spending them trying my heart out. Oh my God. I know he's going to be right there with me. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Yes, he will. Yeah. Ah. Yes, he will. That's what he wants. He wants you to be real with him. Amen. Yeah. He wants yeah. you to be real with him. Yeah. We ain't done yet. We're going to flow a little bit. We're going to go to the book of Ezra. Keep flowing. Keep flowing. Nehemiah is. We're going to put them together. So in the book of Ezra, Nehemiah. You know, they had came and, and they took because they had turned their back on God, uh -huh. worshiping other gods. Yeah. God said, if you do that, you're going to read, I believe, the root of the root of 28 and tell you the blessings of God if you follow and you stay faithful to God and it tell you the curses. What will happen to you? One of the curses will I will scatter you right. among the nations. Yeah, I read it. Huh? But God also said, if you turn your heart toward me and repent, and I'll bring you back from all over the world that time. Right. And that's what God did. So in the book of Ezra, dear my God just bring him back. He bring him back. So we go to Ezra chapter 9. I'm going to go through this because I'm going to get to the next. I got about three more scriptures. Come on with it. Come on with it. Come on, Work the word. Amen. Amen. It's all <laughs> it says, when these things have been done, the Jewish leaders came to me and said, Many of the people of Israel. And even some priests and Levites have not kept themselves separate from the people living in the land. They have taken up the detestable practice of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the, the Perizzites, the Jews, all these people that God had already destroyed. For the men of Israel have married women from these people and have taken them as wives for their sons. Children of God marry with the children of the world. That's right. Ezra. So Ezra was a priest also, by the way, said, When I heard this, I tore my cloak and I pulled my hat. Come on here, y'all. He was going crazy. He said, Then all who trembled at the words of God, he said, When I heard this and I pulled my shirt and I sat down utterly in shock. Then all who trembled at the words of God Israel came and said with me because of this outrage committed. And I sat there utterly appalled at the time. So then he go to going in on God, right? He go to talking to God and talking about how they messed up again. Lord, you just, we just went through this, Lord. We were just in captivity because we turned our backs to you. And man, here we are doing it again. He pleading out for the people. He being a Moses for the people. He crying out, asking for all forgiveness, right? And then verse 10, he said, Oh, now our God, what can we say after all this? For once again, we have abandoned your command. Wow. Your servant, the prophet, warned us when they say it. The land you are entering is possessed and totally defiled by detestable, detestable practices of the people living there. From one end to the other, the land is filled with corruption. Don't let your daughters marry their sons. Don't take their daughters as wives for your sons. If you follow these instructions, you will be strong and will enjoy good things. If you follow these, come on here. So if you marry right, you will enjoy. Come on here, y'all. You will enjoy a good life. You will enjoy prosperity. Huh? And then it say, leave it to your children forever. Now we go to say, oh, chapter 10. While Ezra prayed and made this confession, weeping and lying down on the ground. 
a very large crowd of people from Israel, men, women, and children gathered, and we bitterly with him. Then Shekinah, son of Jehai, and the descendant of Elam, said to Israel, We have been unfaithful to our God, for we have married these pagan women of the land. But in spite of this, there is hope for Israel. Let us now make a covenant with our God to divorce our pagan wives, to send them away with their children. We will follow the advice given by you and by others who respect the commands of our God. Let it be done according to the law of God. So this says according to the so according to the law of God, you need to separate yourself from them. From them. That's what it says in the Old Testament. Now we're going to get on to the New Testament. So this happened in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. When, it, when, it, when the exiles came back and they married outside of the believers. And the men of God took to that and they made them divorce their wives in Ezra and Nehemiah. <coughs> and they sent them away. Now we're going to go to the New Testament because we ain't done. And we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 
Everything. Are you bending them up or are you tearing them down? Thank you, Pete. Because as a man or woman of God, we hear the word. We can do but we can build up and tear down. Yes, we can. So what are you doing? Are you drawing them in? Or are you pushing them away? That's it. Come when that man coming to ask you to fix it, something that you curse them out like a dog? And you reminding him, oh, what about all you was out all that night? What you doing? How you acting like a woman and go, what about you a man and go, how you acting like a man and go, what you doing? Is you being harsh to her every time that she ain't doing something that's out of the will of God? I mean, she's not a believer, so come on, you, you made that choice and that decision. What are you doing? Are you acting like the, are you, the Bible says you're supposed to love your wife like Christ loved the church. So if that's how you loving that woman? I'm asking. Is that how you, is you forgiving her? Nah. Come on here, man. Let's right here. Is you getting down with her? Is you praying for her? Because huh? you can't expect her for to be doing these things when she is an unbeliever. You can't expect your husband who's not a believer for to do these things if he's not a believer. But you can build him up to go there, though. Right. You can build your wife up to be the woman of God that she's supposed to be. You can build your husband up to be the head and the man that he's supposed to be. Say it, Pete. Say it, Pete. I'm just saying, though. You can build him up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why would you get a husband and don't want him to be your head? Yeah. When that's his position. Yeah. That's his position. That is a label for him. Every man came from out of the world mm -hmm. and they took the position as a head. So your husband can't come out of the world and take the position as a head? I did. I was in the world. Now I'm the head of my wife. So I'm saying, now nah, you can't build him up, baby. Look, ain't nothing wrong with talking to your husband. Baby, look, God want to use you. God wants you to be that man. He's supposed to be, he wants you to be the head. Why would you want the brother to be the head when everything works better? Well, he's supposed to be. Why? When, you, when he the head, you can run to him and talk to him. Y'all can pray together. Y'all can talk together. Y'all can come to yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. But when he not your head, why are you expect him to act like a head if you don't want him to be your head? If, he, if you the head, if you the head, what he is he? The tail. The tail. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like my brother Moses, I'm going to be like Simon, well, who, I, who the wife going to be you? Oh, Lord. Oh. I'm just yeah. saying, though, what you want him to be, uh, Elizabeth or something? Uh -huh. You want him to be Sarah? Uh -huh. Who going to play the woman role? Because uh -huh. the Bible says uh, the, the women, women, the older women are supposed to teach the younger women how to what? Yeah. How to That's submit right. to their husband. How to love their husband. Yeah. So if you ain't doing that, how you going to teach your daughters how to do it? Say it, Say it, Say it. For real though, no. all you teaching them to bump against a man every time some go, I, I wouldn't let him do that. If I was you, I'd tell him this, not tell him that. And I, I'm my own one. Show me in the Bible where it work yet. I'm a Bible, I'm a Bible man. Man, if you can show me in the Bible where it work, then I'm convinced. But I can't find it nowhere in the Bible where you can act like that. I'm supposed to act like that. A woman of God. We all got specific instructions on what to do and how to do it. We all have specific instructions on who we are and what we are in the body of Christ, who we are, what we are in marriage. For real, though, a father going to do what? Father the relationship. I'm going to be over you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to govern you. A mother going to do what? Mother the relationship. I'm going to nurture you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to be sweet and kind. I'm going to have a quiet and meek spirit like the Bible says. A father can't mother the relationship. A mother cannot father the relationship. It's an error. And you can see the error once it's called being like that. You can go and be like, oh, no, I won't be around it. You know what I'm saying? You can see the error automatically. And you, you know, sometimes I'm telling you, I know me personally, I don't like to be around me. I'm telling the man don't know who he is. He don't know because you can't come tell me nothing, bro. You can't. You can't even control your house, bro. How you going to come tell me something? Oh, you know, the woman acting a fool with her husband. Well, hold up, baby. I ain't your husband, man. You can't handle me like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that ain't how that go. You just keep it real. Come on, you here? First Corinthians, we're going to be at 7. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians, 6 and 4. Amen. 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 Amen.
drink. You ain't got a problem here. I'm talking straight from the word. Get your foot off my neck. <laughs> so true. We're going to go from 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, and then we're going to go to 11 and 8. It says, but I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. <laughs> Women. The head of every man is who? Christ. So if you want to get his attention, you go to who? Christ. You go to Christ. You don't go to no business and you talk to, to the people working in there. You got a problem. You want to get to the boss. Let me get to your head. Who over you? No, I don't like attitude. I, let me talk to your boss. That's who you want to talk to, the person who's in charge over them. So if you got a husband, you need to know Christ is in charge. Christ is over your husband. Say it, Say it, he says, and the head of the wife is who? The husband. Is who? The husband. The husband. And the head of Christ is who? God. That's right. You don't see, you don't see Christ undermining God. You don't see Christ trying to tell God what to do. It's all. It's a chain of command. And it flow good if you follow it. No matter how you see it, no matter what the world tell you, man, everything will go exactly how you want if you do what God says. Amen. Stop doing things your way. Amen. And then we're going to go to 11 and 8. He said, for man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman from man. So God made you specifically for a man, for a certain man too. Amen. You need to find, you need to pray and ask God who the man is that he got for you, who he wants you with. Because God created you. Amen. That don't mean you lesser. Just because you see, some people think that you got to submit. They, they think you might be lesser. Or, you know what I'm saying? You got to prove. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. You have a lot of power in submission. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. The meek shall inherit the earth. Come on here, y'all. Y'all don't even know, my God. Word is so with you in whatever you do. God is with you. Yes, he is. It says you were made for one man. Amen. Women make sure that you're with the man you are made for. Amen. Because God made you specifically for a man. Yeah. You need to pray and seek and search God for it is who God wants you. We're going to go to the next scripture. This is the last scripture. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians 6. <clears throat> and 14. Now, we just heard Paul got through talking about what he was talking from himself. If you be with an unbeliever, if they cool with you being a believer, believing in God, praying and worshiping, he says, stay with them because you can get them saved. And also, you can get your children saved. 14 say, do not be unequally yoked with believers. Now, this ain't nobody talking from the hell's heaven. It's God talking about. Don't be Unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? None. What accord has Christ had with the devil? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What do y'all have in common? Nothing. 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 What do y'all have in common? Nothing. Nothing. What do y'all have in common? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? What union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Hallelujah. 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 We're the temple of the living God, and we are holy, right? Or well, why would you buy some unholy to a God's temple? Come on, Pete. Come on, Pete. Because of lust? <laughs> because of how good she look? Because how pretty her lips is? Come on, Pete. Come on, Pete. Is she wearing that dress? Come on here. All this is. It's lust of that. Lust of the flesh. It's lust. Lust of the flesh. But did God tell you to be with that person? No. Did God assign you to that person? No. You need to be seeking God out and asking God, 
who your wife supposed to be, who your husband supposed to be. Amen. God Amen. put man Amen. and woman together. God said, what I put together, can't and no man, man put us up. So what God put together, can't no man separate. That's right, that's right. But if it wasn't put together by God, it ain't gonna last. It's only for a season. Don't speak of the language. Only for a season. If it wasn't put together by God, don't expect it to last. Amen. Like I said, no matter how much money you got, that ain't gonna make it last. I don't care how good you is in the bed, that ain't gonna make it last. If it wasn't ordained by God, it ain't gonna work. Peace, 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 peace. I don't know who it is want to get mad. Who thinking about getting mad? But you better make sure you make the right decision. That's right. You better make sure you making the right decision. You need to be talking to your children about they husbands and they wives. Like my mama told me from a kid, boy, pray for your wife. Whenever you want your wife to be put in your prayer, she kept telling me that. And from a little boy, I pray for my wife every night. I mean, Lord, see, if, if my prayers change, you know, you get older, you mature, you know what you want, you still know what you want to do. Right. So my prayers always change up, it start sharpening and sharpening and sharpening. Yeah. Right. I got to start getting more to the point of what I want. Yeah, God, I don't want her to be more active than me. You know what I'm saying? You don't want your partner to be more more than what you want. Y'all want to be on the same level. Amen. Y'all want to be in agreement. That's right, man. We got to carry the two in wood. Agreement. So why you get together, damn, all of a sudden you don't want to be in agreement no more. That's crazy. That's dumb. Amen. All of a sudden y'all want to be in agreement no more. You know what I'm saying? Come on here. Don't nobody want to humble themselves. <laughs> and then you expect stuff to work. Come on here, y'all. All right, y'all. That's it for the day. Jesus Christ, Father God. We pray that they enjoy prosperity and peace through their marriage all the days of their life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, we just love you. We thank you. We send this prayer with the blood in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So don't forget about Kimberly. You can go off on your phone or land on your computer. You can pay with Kimberly. It's an easy access to pay your time.